Can I ask a quick question? What's up? Want to mess with you or anything like that? My name's Chris. Mike. Nice Mike? To meet you. Yeah, yeah. Nice to meet you as well. This is my brother, Chris. Chris as well. Nice to meet you. Yes, sir. Uh, we are brothers in Christ, and as Christians, we love you as a brother in humanity. And so we're making sure that you have heard I the good news of the gospel. I don't want you guys to waste your time with me. Oh, oh no, man. You're not a waste of time. It's never a waste of time uh, to tell someone that the Lord Jesus Christ died for sinners, for the wicked, those who have lied or been arrogant, was raised from the dead, and is going to judge the world, and that you must repent and trust in Christ to be saved and forgiven. That's not a waste of time at all. I take my chances with the way that I live my life. But, uh, yeah, I guess we're you nice. have a worldview that you adopted? Other than uh, I pretty much believe that, uh, you know, Nothing can be known for certain, but that the scientific method provides our best possible uh, shot at explaining the universe. Is, you know is that? that something? I mean, what you just said is that called something? Well, how do you know it? Well, it's. I mean, how do you, how do you know it? Well, so I have never seen any evidence of someone performing miracles, but I have. I mean, science is predictive. I mean, that's that's kind of the crux of why I believe science. Um, yeah. But you mentioned that yeah. you can't know, you can't know anything. Didn't you just say that? Yeah. And, and so then. You make your own judgment call. But if you said you can't know anything, and then you mentioned science, which is definitely something, then you can know that, right? Well, I mean, what does it mean to know something? Yeah. But no, your name's you Mike. Your name's Mike, right? My name is Mike. Yeah, but um, didn't you just say you can't know anything, but then you just name something that you knew? I would ask the question, okay. what does it mean to know something? Because I didn't actually say that I know science. I think that science provides the best of it. The, the most convincing explanation sure. that I have seen. Sure, but that, that is, I mean, if you ask me, is there a white rhinoceros behind me right now? Right. I can't say with 100% certainty until I look and uh -huh. verify that there is not one, that there is one. But, but could you know it after you look? Well, what does it mean to know something? <laughs> That's the question. Yeah, you have knowledge of it, certainty. Well, if I can see it, how do I know that I'm not going to Oh, oh, I can answer that question. Uh, to know something means that it is true according to God. I mean, that's how you interpret it, but seeing as you're using language in this way and I'm using language in a different way. We're communicating. Plenty, well, we are, but I would say that if you use a word and then assert that that is the definition of the word when there are many people who disagree with you, then most linguistics, most sociolinguistics at least, would disagree that you are using that word unambiguously. Yeah, so how do you know that the statements you just use are even being interpreted correctly by even yourself? I like, mean, I don't. I think that, that, you know, my interpretation is my best approximation of reality. And how do you know that for certain? I don't. So how do you know anything at all is real at all? I don't. I think that this is the best, the most convincing explanation that I've seen. So, so Mike, let me uh, posit this for you. Because you have readily admitted, and I, I appreciate your consistency actually, well, consistency to a degree, uh, that you have readily admitted that you know nothing for certain, and you don't even know if you know that you don't know anything for certain, you're really just leaking the image of God all the while you're contradicting yourself and you're okay with it. I mean, I could also, you know, you, you, so here's the thing. Okay. Humans are imperfect creatures. Sure. And I think that's one thing that we can I'm glad you called us creatures. Because yeah. we are. That means they're a creator. But anyway, go ahead. Sorry. I mean, that's the etymology of the word. But okay, cool. But sorry, go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt you. So, you can ask me many questions. Right. And I don't have this kind of conversation very often. And so... I appreciate know, it. Like I said, language... Like, like we both agree on, language isn't necessarily the most precise means of communication. Okay. And so, you can point out, you know, small inconsistencies and in things that I say. <laughs> and... I think they You're were probably right. large. Yeah, I would think they're large. Like you, you, trivial, you trivialized it, but I believe not knowing anything for certain makes you know nothing at all. You don't think that's the case? Well, I also think that you don't know anything for certain. Well, you can't know that for certain. I can't, but neither be. But are you saying that you can know something for yeah, certain? Absolutely. Well, you and you can as well. I, I, I actually just answered you, but you didn't. You didn't like the definition, I guess. No, I just disagree with you. Even having knowledge, of course. But so, so I answered your question, right? And you just admitted I answered it by saying you don't. You don't like the definition. I didn't say that I didn't like anything. I thought you literally just said I didn't like the definition. No, people would disagree with you. I said that not everyone agrees on that definition, and so sure. it's not unambiguously true. So here's another way to say it: I have justification for, or we have justification for what we believe. What is your justification for what you believe? Well, I would say that your justification is circular, and therefore it's not a, a justification. But you can't know that. So, still. Well, but in my frame of reference, you guys can't know anything either. 
So what is your justification for what you believe? Even if you don't like our justification, what's yours? Give us better justification. How about that? Better Seems justification to be than what? Than what I just gave you. How you know anything? Well, like I said, science is predictive. And but you don't know that for certain, so that's not justification, right? And How do you see this conversation? I'm going to be honest with you. Oh, only to point out the inconsistencies in your worldview and that it will only lead to we destruction. Don't you to convert right yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we can't God, convert you. God, we, we, we can't convince you. you. Have you ever, like, actually approached, you know, a, a scientist who scientist. does not believe? Yeah, I, I'm getting my PhD in material science. Okay. Have you ever actually approached a scientist who does not believe in God and convinced them? Convince them of what? Convince them to I, become I, religious. Oh, no, no, no. I can only convince you that you're, you have absurdities in your worldview. I mean, uh, from my perspective, your guys' worldview is completely absurd. Yeah, but you can't know it. Well, I mean, according... So, it, it, from my perspective, sure. to know something, that's, that's, that's meaningless. Yeah. It, from, like, when you guys say that you know something, that comes off that as absurd to me. Why? Because... Do so you know that? Like I said, you, you, you see, I, I'm trying to... I'm so we're not trying to be funny, word. but... It's, it, it is kind of funny. Do you yeah. have certain... Yeah. What, what word would you prefer? I'll, I'll well, I don't it. think that it makes sense for us to have a conversation using the word no or using absolutes because you guys have a very different definition of the word absolute than I do. So here's the thing, Mike. Um, and and we, don't dis instance, we don't disagree with you. This is, this is what I would we, say. Like, if you... Whenever I said the word green, sure. you guys had... And you guys said the word green. You guys were talking about, you know... A banana, then I think I would be very right in saying maybe we shouldn't use the word green because when I say green, you guys think of the word banana. And when you guys say the word orange, I think... I think I get what you're saying. You're yeah. saying if we can't come to a consistency on what something on is, what words mean. we should And so when I say word? no, I'm talking about something... I'm talking about absolute certainty, which is what, something that I think is never justified in any circumstance. Except for that statement. Yeah, you pretty, seem pretty certain about it. That well, statement well, you just made seems absolute. Right? You can't make any knowledge statements without absolute certainty. So, our world, be, like, our world is based upon a lot of our... our previous knowledge. Previous A knowledge. equals B equals C equals D, that Most kind of thing, right? Most don't live every aspect of their life in accordance with nothing can ever be known. You have to... Of course. You, you, yeah. Just like you, you guys live. don't do everything in accordance with Christ. Yeah, we do. No, you don't. Yeah, we do. No, well, we, we're not gonna we're not gonna we're not gonna make assertions we're not gonna make assertions on, about you, so you don't necessarily have to make assertions what do you about mean us. By a biblical literacy. Okay, so we interpret uh, we interpret a text according to its genre. So when like uh, different genres have would have poetic meaning, like if Jesus said, "I am the door," we don't believe he literally has hinges. Right. We believe he's making yeah. an analogy of exactly. and things like that. So we read things rationally. We read things logically. You need logic. Uh, even though you probably wouldn't admit where logic came from, but you need logic to be able to interpret the world well, around you, and so we brain. need that too. But how would you logically assert that? How would I logically assert that? Yeah. I think that, well, okay, so you're using a camera right now. You said, sure. Did religion create that, or was it engineering? When you say religion, we could say yes if I then assume that religion equals the God of the Bible. Jesus Christ. So yes, Jesus Christ is God the reason the is the reason for that camera the existing. The is why the camera exists. Yeah, we can justify this camera existing. So what about science existing prior to, you know, the Abrahamic religion? Would you say that the word science means coming to know something? No. So or it's knowledge the process of attempting to falsify something until you can't anymore. So and then you okay. end up with a theory. And sure. So nothing is absolute in science. Do you, do you believe in the scientific method? I think that it's the best. That it's the best. So it's, it's the best thing that we've figured out so far. But science existed, sort of. I mean, we we came up with. We got some things right before the scientific method, and then okay. we came up with the scientific method, and that proved to be a better way of looking at the world if we want to figure it out. Can I summarize the scientific method as test, repeat, observe? Is that okay to summarize it like that? I think that you're missing the step of... You're, you're missing some... That's what I'm asking you. Can I can I summarize it as that, or how would you summarize it? Like that's for like a C-minus answer, but that's still a pass. Oh, okay, yeah. So I is mean, it like... The, the, the crux of the scientific method is that everything needs to be attempted to be falsified. You need to approach problems with the intention of, I'm going to try and poke as many holes in this as yeah. I can. And actually, I kind of admire the fact that you guys um, are applying some aspects of that in this... 
Well, God created God created science, so we we it's like well, built no, into I mean, us. Like, we're not. You, you know, I can tell that like you guys have had a lot of these conversations with people that disagree with you. Okay. And that when those people have come up with things, no doubt that have challenged you, you guys have changed your approach, and you guys have. No, nah, not really, because it, it's actually kind of basic, and, I, and I'm not trying to um, be condescending or marginalize what you're saying, but it's kind of basic in that you admit that you don't know anything for certain. Which that's that's fair, well, no, and that's like consistent. I, said, I don't think that we should even use the word no because when you say no, okay. you mean banana, and when Objective. I say no, I mean green. So let me say it a different way. You have admitted you don't have all knowledge. And do you say that you do have all knowledge? I definitely do not have all knowledge. Yeah. So do you admit that you have you do not have all knowledge? I do. If you concede okay. that you also so let me, do not. Sure. So okay. let me let me continue the statement because we don't need right. to get hung up yeah. on one of those parts. So with that being said, and again, this is just to show how basic it is to refute what you're saying is because neither one of us, none of us have all knowledge. Yeah. The only way to be able to have any knowledge is if someone who has all knowledge reveals some things to you. Well, you're presupposing that knowledge has to be had. That's what does the word had mean? Well, like you're saying... If, if you don't have all knowledge and I don't have all knowledge, and the only way to have knowledge is to have someone have all knowledge. But who's to say that all knowledge has to be had? Because the very thing you spouted was knowledge that you had prior to be able to say what you Are just you said. saying that I have no knowledge or I just don't have all knowledge? No, you have no justification for any knowledge. Right. You have knowledge. You know yeah, well, you definitely okay, know things. I can say, you know, uh, I mean, you, you guys have no doubt heard, like, the whole idea of the flying spaghetti monster. What yeah. if I say that the reason that I believe... Mm -hmm. Science is because, or the reason that I believe that this bench is underneath me is because yeah. the flying spaghetti monster says that this bench is underneath me. We would me. say, cool, now you're not an atheist, you're a theist, operating on theistic terms, and yeah. now you have to uh, give some kind of revel revelation, like we have the Bible, to prove our God. Where are you proving your God? Well, yeah. so, what's so you're no longer an atheist. A revelation. What, yeah. Why does that have to be... Why does that justify the existence of a God? You don't know all things, so you have no, to have certain... things because the flying spaghetti monster told you. Great, so you're yeah. not an atheist. Anymore. Yeah, you're appealing to I'm, something transcendent. I'm not actually doing that. I'm doing that for the purpose we, we, of this We argument. see what you're saying. Exactly. Yeah, but, but, you, but, uh, here, let me say this one part. Yeah. What, you're, what you're proving, and maybe you might agree with me, is that you're bringing up something absurd so that you can prove something that you think is absurd. And so what that says to us is that you have to reduce yourself or your arguments to absurdity to disprove our arguments, which are not absurd at all. I don't think it's absurd by definition. I think that's... Spaghetti monster? Because well, uh, spaghetti think... monster presupposes that spaghetti existed before the monster existed, which is absurd. So you're saying there's eternal spaghetti that exists? I mean, I think it's also absurd to say that... It, by the same, if, if you're going to call that absurd, I don't think that's any more absurd than the idea that, you know, an almighty God would, mm -hmm. for instance... Or, first of all, that... that you know, an almighty God could create, like, created the world in seven days. Mm -hmm. We've never seen any evidence of anything like that. He actually that. created six, but I got what you're saying. Okay. But yeah, you're appealing to enough. objective knowledge. Well, I think... You're saying this cannot be true... Because, because you don't understand it. No, I'm not saying that it can't be true because I don't understand it. Oh, I'm saying that well then I didn't... I missed something. I'm saying that, from my perspective, both are equally absurd, but mm. there's, there's a lot of people that believe in God... And so it's not really, I don't think that I really am in a position to say that it's objectively absurd, even if it seems absurd to me. Subjectively absurd. It doesn't make sense to me. Okay. So but how? That doesn't mean that it doesn't flat make sense say to it's, other people. Flat earthers would say it's absurd to believe the earth is round. Yes, Does that make it true? I mean, wait, 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 wait. Did you repeat that? My point is, just because some people don't understand it doesn't make it false, correct? Or even true. I think understand is a little bit patronizing of a way to say it, but I think agree with is more so. I mean, when you're talking worldviews, like, I mean, I'm not going to say, I don't really know what I'm saying. I don't really know what I'm trying to What are you getting your PhD in? Uh, so I'm getting it in material I, I mean, I heard science. that part. Material part. science. Okay. So let me use your, um, your discipline as an example. So okay. I'm an engineer. I'm a computer programmer. And there are certain things that I must have, like as axioms or presuppositions, for me to do my job. Would yeah. you agree? Uh, well, so... Like, I must presuppose the keyboard exists <laughs> for me to be able to type on it to put code into a computer. You have to act like right? it exists, but that doesn't mean that you have to presuppose that it exists. I mean, are you familiar with George Orwell's concept of double thinking? So, let me do this. Other than us 
getting into deeper and deeper nitty gritty. Well, the, if we can't, if, so here's the thing. In, at the beginning of this conversation, sure, I was having a, I was, I was abridging my point of view because I, I thought so. that this was, you know, like you guys were coming to talk to me about some things, and that I thought this was gonna, you know, you guys were gonna go on your way when you found out that I didn't believe in God. Oh man, we love you. We can't do that. Uh, if you're willing to talk, we'll be willing to talk. We love, but here's what it yeah, is. we love so you as a brother in humanity. Worldviews are great. It's almost like saying I love you, but you're going to go off so and I'm commit. Explaining physics you know. to someone who doesn't know physics, I might start with Newtonian mechanics. But Newtonian mechanics are an approximation. And he also was a, uh, a Bible believing, well, uh, or kind of Bible believing, kind of but he believed in God. But um, so you're appealing to someone who was a theist, is my point. Well, I'm also about to say that Newton was wrong. Um, and he was. <laughs> Newton was wrong about a lot of things. But he was so, right about a lot of things, too, right? He was Wait right. a minute. You, okay, you claim so that he was I, wrong. I'm, How do you know that? Sorry. Because it's okay. evidence let, of let, let you finish. In any let, case, let you finish. So I would start with Newtonian mechanics. Sure. And then if I found out that this person was more interested, then I would say, well, okay, but really, science has falsified to the best of its ability, mm -hmm. much of Newtonian mechanics um, and replaced it with special relativity, okay. general relativity, okay. and electromagnetism, and all of the other branches of physics, and those have in turn, you know, been falsified Did and whatnot. And so you start out with something simple, yeah. and then when you look closer at it, you have to be more precise. And sure. so I think in this conversation, I started out... Um, High level. Yeah, we started at a high level, and we, yeah. if we we're going to get down to the nitty gritty. We really do need to define terms. Okay, so sure, not a you problem. Say, like, you have to start out with axioms, and then sure. that's when I bring in double thinking. Sure, no problem, no like, problem. Yeah, if, you, if, you're, if you're willing to go there, then we can go there. Not, right, not understand. a problem. This is okay. actually quite an interesting mental exercise for me. So, and I'm sorry that I'm sorry if that's. I'm just being frank. No, 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 no. Please do. We're transparent. Uh, we think you're going to go to hell if you don't repent and trust in Christ. And you think we're just crazy. So we can be transparent. Well, what does it mean to be crazy? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, so with that being said, to go back to the axioms, what question did you want me to answer? Well, so you made the assertion about the keyboard. Yeah, you made the assertion that you need to presuppose that the keyboard exists. Sure. And I would say okay. no. Okay. Presupposing that it exists doesn't mean the same thing as acting functionally as Shh. if it exists while not... Um, I don't disagree. To... I agree yeah. with you. Okay. Now what? Well, you were the one who was about to build on that. Okay. Yeah. So if I have some axioms that drive me or cause me to act as though the keyboard exists... Yes. Can I say that? Yeah, of course. Cool. Yeah. So, with, so with those certain axioms, those certain principles, I'm going to go about performing a task, okay. given the knowledge that I have. Yeah. that fair? Yeah. So you do the same things in mechanical engineering or in your material, material science. science. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. The reason that you are able to do these things, and I'm going to draw a conclusion that I'm very confident you will not agree with, but this is just painting the point okay. of how I'm interested. trivial it is to refute your position. Okay. Um, you do those things without, without testing all other things that got you to the point you are at right now. Yeah, I do. Okay. What you're doing is you're ignoring the infinite regress that would come about to get you to the point you're at right now. Because you don't have infinite knowledge, and we don't either, right? Yeah. Because you don't have infinite knowledge, you are able to, in one sense, kind of... Um, dismiss or ignore the infinite regress to know all and to prove all of the things before that to come to the position you are now. The reason you're able to do that, Mike, is because you're made in the image of God and you then use that in Imago Dei, to use a more biblical term, you use that image of God to actually perform and act in your scientific worldview. But you need God to do it because you just admit it that you don't prove all other things prior to it to say that you have the position that you have now. So That's why it's easy to refute it. Infinite knowledge. Religion. Otherwise, you have infinite regression and you would not be able to come to any certain or any kind of ideas currently because you would have to prove all the things from before forever. That's not it's infinite regress. So it's you infinite, see what it, it, it is infinite regress. Okay, that's kind of the foundation of science. Because once you know something in science, then you don't have any reason to keep questioning. Actually, I don't disagree with you. And the reason you can come to know, and since you're using that word, the reason you can come to know anything at all is because God has revealed certain things that you can know for certain. I was using the word know there actually the same way that you were. 
and that okay, science sure. doesn't ever know anything. So we're we're, we're talking banana, so banana the, now. The so I'm saying that regress. like science is founded of it's, the, infinite, the infinite regress that you're talking about is foundational to science. Because if you don't have that infinite regress and that lack of absolution, then you would eventually reach absolute knowledge. And that's where you stop questioning. And that's why we, the fact that we have that infinite regress, or presumably infinite regress, um, is why we're still questioning. And that's actually my point. You don't operate on the basis of actually knowing things absolutely. You operate on the basis of coming to generalized assumptions that allow you to progress. Yes. Do you see the problem with that? No. Okay, here's the problem with it. By virtue of you doing that, you don't know anything else at all, and therefore you can't tell us God doesn't exist. I can't say for certain that God does not exist. That's exactly why you need to repent. Well, but... That's exactly I, I why you need to repent and no trust in Christ. I'm not behind me either, but I'm not going to live my life as if there is. That, so you a little bit, maybe you may have noticed this, you a little bit jumped over what we were saying and went back to your, your imaginary white horse or whatever that might be behind you. Um, just as you being a material scientist, there are certain things that because you've reviewed them before, you'll say, well, I don't need to review it again, which you just got done admitting, right? Uh, you, for example, when you sat down, you did not check the bench to make sure it wouldn't collapse as you sat down on it, or did you? I didn't. You did not, okay. That's because, and you probably never tested this bench before. Is this true? I mean, I'm testing the bench by sitting on it right now. I'm saying before. I've sat on this bench before. Have you, before you sat on it the first time, did you test it before you sat on it? I mean, no, but I can okay. look at I just the want bench. to make sure. I can look at the bench and I can see that the bench appears to be made out of metal. I can see that the bench is... That's what I'm kind of get at. I can, I, can, I can use my knowledge of science. When, right. when I say knowledge, I mean knowledge the way that I mean the word knowledge. Okay. I can use my understanding of okay. science yeah. to draw the conclusion that the yeah, bench course. is likely not Exactly. Why do you trust your senses at all? What does it mean to trust one's senses? You tell me. What, uh, when you hear that word, what do you think of when you hear trust? I'll I, probably I, use your definition. I mean, I think by your definition of trust, I don't trust my senses. But by my definition of trust, I do. What definition are you assuming that I have? I think that when you say trust, you mean absolutely. Well, no, mean? I mean rely on, oh, give well, certain credence to. If I had something better than my senses, I would. Okay. Yeah. I'll let you finish that thought because I think you know where I'm going. Go ahead. So in regards to you trusting your senses yeah. and you haven't proven your senses to be unreliable in all circumstances, is that right? In all circumstances. They're well, not unreliable I, in they, all circumstances. They've proved thus far, from my experience, to be the most reliable right. that I have had. Okay. So that's not the same thing as saying Fair. that my senses are on par with every other means of sensing. Sure. Are there some people who have unreliable senses? I mean, yes, there are. Cool. Yeah, I agree. We're all, we're all have unreliable senses. I mean, people have auditory hallucinations. Your senses can be fooled sure. with are there, so with that being said, are there certain people that have irrational thinking because of their unreliable senses? I think that's a little bit reductionist, but uh, probably. Okay. Probably? Well, there's no irrational people? There are no such thing as actually irrational people? No, I think that it's a bit reductionist to say that, to kind of imply at least, because that seemed like where that was going, that irrationality is caused by poor sensory Oh, yeah, yeah. There, there doesn't need necessarily be a okay, correlation. Yeah, That's you. fair. Right. But, but with that being said, since there are other things that could be faulty, is it possible that the thinking of one could be faulty or irrational? That's what I'm asking. Are you asking? Yeah, I mean, they're both possible. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. So how do you know you're not someone with irrational thinking? I don't. So then you're willing to tell us that God does not exist or the God of the Bible is not true and the things that he said are not true, even though you could have irrational thinking that makes you think those things. So, like, like I said, double think. I mean, I'm going I'm to draw it back to that. Okay. You can go uh, around your life yeah. acting in a certain way and believing in another thing. Mm. And uh, because it's just, I mean, I think humans are probably wired for thinking. I, I'll, I'll say that. Um, huh. so that might, but, I appreciate that. But Sounds like image of God talk, but... Okay, in any case, <laughs> what I'm saying is, is that yeah. you can't is that it's very difficult to go about your life in this society um, sure. and use words that almost everyone uses like true, mm. no, mm. um, 
with the you know infinite caveats or nearly infinite caveats that a true scientific understanding that we can only approach asymptotically, you know, really. I, I don't know what that word means. Asymptotically is like where you have, uh, for instance, an asymptotic. Uh, an asymptote might be if you graph. Uh, if you take a here's an example. Uh, okay. Let's say that. Um, I'm trying to cross this uh, this thing, right? Cement block. Yeah, this block. Um, and let's say that my first step, I cover half the block. Okay. My second step, I cover one quarter of the block, and then the next step, I cover one eighth of the block. And okay. Then one sixteenth. Okay. Cetera. If I keep on going in that pattern, I will approach that asymptotically, meaning that I'll get closer and closer, mm. but never actually okay. reach it. Okay. I think um, I got you. So okay. That's, that's Appreciate that. Of, yeah. Um, what is that? That's Zeno's paradox. Um, so that's how you feel like with truth. That's, yeah, I think that's, that's what science is. That you get closer and closer, but you don't reach it. That's what science is. But to call it, to say that there's no relationship between science and truth is denying that asymptote, but that asymptotic would, relation. But wouldn't that even know that you know truth, to know that you're that close to it? Or even that you're going that's in the just, right direction? That's just what, uh, I mean, that's just what my senses tell me. And so basically you're relying on faith, is pretty much what I keep hearing you say. Whenever you use the word senses, you're relying on faith to be able to get you from point A to point B and to even validate that blind you reach faith. point B. It is blind faith. That you even reach point B. I mean, so it's blind in the sense of what? I mean, in the I sense that there's no that one... The sense of sight, for in the sense no. that no one's, no one's operating or nothing is operating on that principle except you. It's, it's blind. Yeah. So for, for us, God is the one who, who operates and we put faith in him. Yeah. The object of your faith, oh, because I made an image of God and I know God that is, God is. God has made creatures to where we can know things for certain. Exactly, he's revealed certain things. That's why you know anything at all. That's actually why we have this conversation. Right. But with that being said, when you operate on that blind faith, you go about it all the while suppressing the truth that the God who made you is gonna hold you accountable so you can continue to run in your sin and run and live the life you want without there being any conviction or condemnation with it. That's why you choose to believe that there is no God, not because there really isn't no God, but you suppress that so that you can live your life as though no God exists. But you'll be judged, Mike. And that's exactly why we approached you to love on you and to expose to you the absurdity and the irrationality of your worldview, even though you are a material scientist. It doesn't matter. So essentially our position for, for the existence of God, it's either God or absurdity. And you proved it by going to that fine spaghetti monster analogy. And okay. saying you can't know anything. We'll right. So, you're kind of bringing it back to the whole knowledge question. Probably, and it, yeah. I still don't really... Okay. I'm trying to choose my words carefully here. I appreciate it. But this... I, I think the point that you're, you're, you're getting at, by having to even be so uh, careful with the words you use if you recognize you don't use them in your, your daily use like you're trying to use them now. Right. You're tailoring them because you see the significance of what we're sharing with you. Well, there's two, there's two, uh, there are two answers to that question. The first one is, is that I don't go around having debates with people. That's um, right. You mentioned that. Frequently. You mentioned that. It you mentioned that. It would appear, I, I, I don't think I'd be wrong in at least drawing the conclusion that it is something that you guys likely do. This is not the first conversation like this that you guys have had. Yep, we probably. engage with worldviews. Yeah, regularly. exactly. Yeah. Um, and so, I, I guess to kind of get what you're saying, yeah. maybe in that sense it's not fair. Well, it's not, it's not a matter of fairness. I mean, this isn't a competition. Honestly, fair. like fair. I said, I, I right. wanted to be straight up with you guys. Uh, this is why am I here. I'm here right now uh, having this conversation with you guys, um, mostly just because I think that it's uh, it's kind of fun. Gotcha. Um, and I'm okay with that. And I'm okay it's, with it's that. Mental gymnastics. And yeah, yeah, sharpens you. Honestly, or hopefully it does. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you guys are. But we want you to think it'd be more than an intellectual game. Exactly. This is not just mental jousting. Yeah. Uh, this is eternity at stake. Right. You'll die one day, Mike. Doesn't matter how much you work out, you'll just die stronger. <laughs> right. That's it. You'll just oh, die with more muscle, yeah. like my pastor says. So uh, the idea behind it is that as you continue to pursue life, death is going to pursue you. And you'll meet it head on and no escape. I mean, no escape. That's terrifying. A lot of people search for an explanation, and that that explanation to a lot of people is an afterlife, but it's not convincing me. And um, as a matter of fact, it won't be unless God changes your heart. So here's something else you may not have heard since you have uh, not really dialogue on this level I mean, I before. Be I used to be Jewish. 
Okay. Uh, so, uh, bar mitzvah speech was, I'm pretty sure I'm an atheist. Oh, wow. Okay. Controversial. I would not have you even guessed that. But with that being said, God is the one that changes a man's heart and a man's mind. Uh, we would be, we would think according to how you're thinking if it wasn't for God's grace towards us. There's no, there's no reason why we shouldn't think like you do, to be honest, apart from God's grace towards us. Because when God gives men over to themselves, all they do is go further and further towards destruction and death. That's why the world is ultimately getting worse and worse, not better and better, because men are getting further and further from God and his so grace. What you're saying the world is he's not restraining as much as he is. Morally, expectancy is going way up morally, not technologically yeah. or advancing in yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, what People still die, of what do course. You say morally, what do you mean? Yeah, men, men are doing things. For like example, uh, murdering a baby mm -hmm. in the womb that used to be one of the most protected areas of a woman. And at nine months. Yeah, and at nine months. <laughs> that is morally wrong. I disagree with you. Of course. Well, I, I, you're being consistent, right? I am. Uh, you, you don't value life the same way we do. So you're being consistent. So I can't really argue that you're that you need to agree with me, yeah. though you should. Yeah, you guys are being but... consistent, too. Honestly, like, I think, I, I, I uh, yeah, I actually, I, I, I mean, yeah, you guys are being consistent. I, that's one thing that I can't say to people who disagree with, like, who are anti-abortion. Like, they are being consistent. Okay. Yeah. But, yeah, God has to change your mind. Uh, and so what I was mentioning is that we know that we can't convince you into the kingdom. We don't want to, because if we did, someone can just convince you out. And so God is the one who changes your heart and mind. And he, if he wants you, Mike, you can't do anything. He will change you and adopt you and take away your desire to be atheistic. And he will make you love Jesus. Why? Because his love towards his children is stronger than your love for sin. So why can't Zeus do that? Because Zeus doesn't exist. And I think you know that. I mean, I can't prove that Zeus doesn't exist. Yes, you can. Oh. The God, God, of, the God, God of the Bible. Is only one God. Exactly. Well, I can't. Well, you yeah, can. In a way that's consistent with my worldview. Oh, your worldview is doesn't exist either. You made up your worldview so you can be consistent with the way that you think. Who are you talking to? According to your so, worldview, talking to you Mike. can't know anything. Yeah, exactly. So not, yeah, not in the way can. that you guys mean no. Okay, yeah, yeah, in the absolute we're, sense. We're yeah, yeah. This, that, that, this that's fair. That, that's fair. Like, that's fair. That's fair. That, that's actually one of the things that I was interested in seeing uh, was how far we could get in this discussion before we ran into that wall. And I think that wall's, I think we're kind of running up against that wall. Yeah, yeah, not a problem. But, I mean, but we just wanted to, like I said, we just wanted to, to point out, like, hey, if no one's ever challenged your thinking to show you the wall that you're actually running into, that you continue to run into, uh, the absurdity or the irrationality, we would hope that God would use us to so be that vehicle to put a rock in your shoe. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But, but at least we can appeal to a transcendent, to, to one who is transcendent outside of us who validates the things we're saying. The only one who can validate what you're saying is you, who is fallible and makes mistakes all the time. You see the problem? Well, so... Like, for example, if I were to ask someone for directions, and I walked up to one guy, and they said, uh, man, I don't know anything for certain, but you can go make a left and then make a right over there. And then I walked up to another guy who said, yeah, I know someone who knows everything, and he has revealed some things to me. You can make a left over there and keep walking straight. I more than likely will follow the one who has given me some kind of reliability or merit that they are saying things that are true. You, however, have given me clear indication that what you could be saying may have no truth whatsoever at all, and you don't even know if you exist. Would you really follow the directions of someone who is claiming that? No. I mean, I think I probably would. I, I think I would probably follow the directions of whoever seems more honest. <laughs> yeah. Like, because that person is at least admitting his own fallibility. Why, why should we be honest? Why should we be honest? Um, Society's kind of built upon a foundation of at least some honesty. Image of God leaking out. Axiom? Image of God leaking out. I mean, we should be honest because we should be honest? No, I'm just saying. Okay, so. Well, he's, he, he's saying like it's relative because the society, society it, it's consensus it. in a sense is what you're saying. It's consensus that has created honesty as a good moral attribute. Yeah, I think like yeah. you can't really, or at least we haven't had a society in which honesty wasn't valued on some level. Image of God. Like we that. do not lie. We, are, we ought not to lie because God is not a liar. God is truthful. We ought not to have sex outside of marriage because God is faithful. These things that you're saying are the image of God just leaking out of you. I mean, I have so, sex outside of marriage all the time. Yeah, we, I, I did as well, but I, I hate it now because the Lord Jesus has changed me. 
but and that's the same that can happen for you. Dude, we don't we're not born Christians. <laughs> so we have a past just like you have a past. Uh, we could probably talk about how much you and I have had sex outside of marriage and the experiences of it. But again, you're going to die, Mike. And all that is storing up the wrath of God. Exactly. So all of that is storing up the wrath of God. I've heard of cryogenics. Quantum immortality. Uh, but that has yet to be experienced. And not necessarily. That literally has yet to be experienced. Quantum immortality. And you wouldn't know if anyone had. That is, no one has ever use that knowledge to make themselves immortal in this so quantum immortality is it, it presupposes the existence of a multiverse and that has zero evidence at all even lawrence krauss krauss yeah, would no, admit no, something I, I like think, that yeah, okay yeah, so yeah, yeah. no i, I agree this, okay, this okay thank you stupid academic exercise okay cool 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 <laughs> well, right. we, i'm glad we're on the same page yeah but i mean it's not well, yeah, 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 yeah you're right yeah all right, right. That was kind of a... A leap. Well, I mean, it was just... Or, or a quick stab or something <laughs> like that. But I, I get what you're saying, Mike. I just kind of wanted to see what would happen if I brought up quantum mortality in this, in this debate. If we were like, ah, oh, I started running off. Like, no, he said quantum physics or quantum... Yeah, yeah, yeah no, I'm not doing that. Well, I mean... Uh, I'm familiar with these some of these things that you're bringing up, so yeah. it doesn't intimidate me. I was actually kind of just curious to see if you guys have heard of it because it's an interesting idea, but I don't think it's really compatible with... Um, God. Sure. Well, let me make sure I give that to you. You don't have to take it. It doesn't matter. I mean, but it's a resource. PerfectGod.com, man. If you get a chance. Campus, yeah. Later this week, if, if you would like to talk, dialogue. If you I don't mind, my, if you don't, I actually enjoy this conversation, too. Yeah, yeah likewise. Um, can I just ask you guys a couple questions? Yeah. Sure. So, if we have time. Yeah, we have, like, at least 10 minutes yeah, uh, before our meter goes crazy. Or one of us can just go run and fill it. Anyway, sorry. Go ahead, Mike. How often do you guys do this? Like, just kind of, like, go... Is, is that a camera also? Yeah. Yeah. When did you start filming? Like, were you filming from the beginning? Yeah. All right. So, I guess, no, that's totally cool. Yeah, I mean... Uh, How often we do we do it? Uh, as often as the Lord gives opportunity. So, for myself, you can assume multiple times a week. Uh, for my brother, he'll give his own answer. Uh, this, we, we got here Saturday. Correct. Uh, to Arizona. We're from Texas. Yeah. And so, we've been doing it every day. Multiple yeah. Times. Yes, sir. And Matthew 28, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. Uh, and, I appreciate you asking me. Yeah, yeah, and that's what we are doing. We want to love our neighbors as ourselves. Well, we don't want to go to hell, and therefore we don't want to see you go to hell as a neighbor of ours, and so we, we care for you, and so we're, we're sharing the gospel with you as we wish someone would uh, with us when we were in the world. So here's a question. So you can kind of probably assume okay. that I have been exposed to Christianity as someone who's lived in the United yes. States. Yes, and you say you're Jewish. I, so, I, you know, yeah. raised Jewish, still identify with the community, but don't believe in any of it. Fair um, enough. So why would you go to me, mm. someone who's sitting outside an engineering building, yes. and thus is at least likely going to be able to, you know, I would say that I probably, like, have... I'm, I'm a tough one to convert, you know? Because I, pro I probably already disagree with you. Not to God. God can convert you like that. You're not tough yeah, on to God. Okay, okay, but I mean... So but I get what you're saying. You know what I mean. I mean yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, okay. Um, so why pick me yeah. as opposed to people who haven't really been exposed to Christianity? Sure. And people... Because I would say those people are the ones who, you know, really, from your perspective, need it, right? Okay. Well, um, so to answer the question, yeah. like, in short, um, you're a sinner. That's why we picked you. Because you're a person who sits on a bench, who breathes God's air, and you have broken God's law, and you need to hear the truth of the gospel, and, we don't and no one exempt. Exactly, that's pretty much so, the point. I see. Well, and so, white, black, poor. Exactly, rich, yeah. we're not pra here. we're not pragmatic. Yeah. So we're not walking up to people who look more likely yeah. to yeah. be. Yeah, exactly. That's that's not how we saying. work. Oh, uh, God has power to change any man's heart. For example, you I don't think have murdered a Christian before. No, never. Okay, have. Paul did, and. God converted Paul, and he ended up writing almost half of the New Testament. So we can say, man, if God is willing uh, to convert Paul, who murdered Christians, was ravaging the church and persecuting people, I'm pretty sure this guy on the bench, not a problem. All right. Well, that's a really um, well-spoken answer. Yeah. I mean, it seems like you guys are pretty internally consistent. Uh, it's possible. You know, I think that, I don't think you guys are bad people. 
tonight. Hope you guys don't. I mean, you guys we might are. think about. We are. Yeah, no, the Bible says no one is good, not even one. Romans chapter 3. Is, it, that's why is there any right. middle ground between good and bad? I mean, from God's eyes or from ours? Because, like, we would say this is good that you're not trying to murder us right now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, that's good. But this is on a, a vertical, or sorry, on a horizontal plane from man to man. Yeah. But from you to God, you are super wicked. Everything. If, yeah, literally. The Bible says that anything not done in faith is sin. That means even as you listen to music or whatever you listen to, uh, yeah, or, or picking up a baby saying, oh, you're so cute, I love you, and not dashing it to the ground, that's still wicked in God's eyes because you're doing all these things all the while giving glory to yourself or creation and not glory to God. I guess I'm pretty wicked then. You are absolutely wicked. But, dude, that, that, that was us. That was our state. That, exactly. We ran towards sin. We ran towards women. We ran towards immorality but God changed us not because I think he mentioned it's not because we were trying to get closer to Jesus and trying to get closer to God no I made up a Jesus that made sure women weren't pregnant after I had sex with them that's the Jesus I made up and because they didn't end up pregnant I'm like oh God must love me but God confronted me one night he he showed me my sin and he brought upon me a great conviction of my sin I wasn't chasing him I was chasing a different Jesus I didn't want the real Jesus, the one that says uh, lust, yeah, exactly, be holy, or lust after a woman is adultery. I didn't want that Jesus. I like pornography. I didn't want the Jesus that said if you have hatred in your heart for a man, you've murdered them. I've literally physically tried to murder people before. So with that being said, I didn't want that Jesus that was actually making me feel bad, right? I wanted the Jesus that was in agreement with me. And that's what people do when they make a God in their own image. They just want a God who is transcendent and able to validate or agree with what they do. I mean, I can say that I think I can admire at least the fact that you chose a hard path even though it was not what you wanted initially. And I think that's, that's, that's pretty cool. Man, it'd be great if I could say yes to that, but actually God chose me. So I can't agree with that. I, I was trying to, I was running that way, right? Uh, and, and God was like way over here. But what God did in his sovereign grace, he grabbed me and pulled me back where he wanted me. Why? Because I'm his child. I'm not the world's child. And so this is kind of how it goes, Mike. Um, God is so loving that if he saw one of his kids playing out on the highway and there's cars going whizzing by, all that kind of stuff, right? Uh, a human earthly father would not wait for their child to say, hey, dad, I'm going to go play with this semi truck that's careening towards me at 80 miles an hour. Come grab my hand. He wouldn't wait for that. A loving dad earthly would reach or try to go get that child and snatch them back, even breaking their arm if they have to, to get them to safety. Is that true? Probably. Probably. I would agree. God, who is sovereign over all things, has a similar love, actually a greater love, where he sees his child in danger, he doesn't wait for the child to say, hey, I'm in danger over here, come get me. No, he knows that you love those trucks. He knows that you love those things, those dangerous things that are careening towards you while you play on that highway. And if he so chooses, Mike, he will snatch you from that highway of death and bring you to himself. Here's the even bigger problem, Mike. You're already dead on the highway. I was already dead on the highway. God chose to pick up my dead body. And this is me dying while I'm saying, don't come get me. I want that truck to come towards me because I want to touch it, right? But I didn't know what was going to happen when I touched that truck. God in his sovereign grace picked me up from my deadness and gave me life. And I ran out of the street as he was grabbing me and I ran towards him. That's how God interacts with his children. He doesn't leave us to our destruction, even if we love our destruction. Why? Because he's wiser than us. And he loves us. And so he grabs us and adopts us, even though we are undeserving. That's I mean, grace. That's, that's what Christ did when he died and rose for us. And our prayer and our hope is though right now you're unwilling, we don't trust in, in you to... Exactly. Not at all. God. Absolutely. We're, alone. we're just giving you evidence that is somewhat understandable so that as you think on these things god may be working in your heart man and, and we want to put the rock in your shoe exactly so the next time you make a knowledge claim you think about god as you as you as you're lifting those weights or doing any kind of exercise you recognize that i didn't test that weight bench or i didn't test that weight to make sure it wouldn't fall on me why because i made in the image of god 
You got to trust in Christ, Mike. That's your only hope to escape that arena that you're in. You must. And it doesn't mean that you will stop being an a engineer or that you won't get your PhD. It doesn't necessarily mean that. But it will mean if you were to get it and then you died, you'd be reconciled to the God that made you. I, uh, you have peace with them. You must repent. I'm not going to repent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, God will do that. God will, God will give you that gift. You won't do it on your own. We know that. I still got to tell you what he told us. <laughs> well, he definitely told me, and now I have a different, uh, I have a more you. nuanced perspective of how uh, you guys see the world. We cool, man. That, uh, yeah. we, we appreciate talking with you, Mike, for real. I believe Thank, it. Thank you for the dialogue. This was, uh, this was interesting. Awesome.